Hi parents, I have two things that I want to talk about today that um, can help you um, work on communication with your child who's using augmentative and alternative communication, and then one activity that I'm going to model at the end. So the first thing I want to talk about is access. Um, if you work on nothing else related to communication this week, this would be the one thing that I would choose for you to work on is making sure that your child has access to their communication system at all times. Um, so that would be either their iPad or a dedicated communication device or a core word board like this one. Um, making sure that it's with them wherever they're at in the house, that you're always setting it out so that they can see it, that it's nearby them um, as much as possible um, so that they can use it if they want to, so that it's always an option to use it, um, so that it's always out. If they don't use it at all, that's fine. Don't even worry about it. Um, we just want to make sure that it's available for them to use. So, so that would be the one thing that if you're going to do nothing else, I would love for you to work on um, making sure your child has access to their communication system. The second thing I want to talk about is modeling. And modeling is simply using their system while you're talking. So what I do in my videos is I often touch words that I say as I'm saying them. The reason that this is important is because this is how they best learn how to use the system is to see someone else using it. Just like how babies learn how to talk by hearing us talk to them um, and, and seeing our mouth movements and whatnot, um, the same applies for our children who are using an alternative form of communication. Um, and so they need just as much modeling as um, like a baby who's learning how to talk with, with their mouth would need. Um, so pointing to the different words on a board or modeling on their iPad, touching words on their iPad um, are, are ways to, to teach them how to communicate by just showing them. Um, this is not asking them questions. This is not telling them, show me on your device. This is not saying, um, you know, where is this button? This is simply you as a communication partner, as their parent, um, using the device so that they can see how to use it. So the two things are, number one, providing access, always having their system whatever it is, available to them at all times. Number two is modeling and just touching or touching buttons, touching pictures of things that are happening throughout your day um, and not requiring them to use it, not requiring them to answer questions, not asking them to find something or show you something on the board or on the device. One other little thing on modeling is there's the one-up rule, which means if they are currently touching one picture at a time, then you can model two pictures at a time. If they're not using it at all, just modeling one at a time is good. So just saying go when something is going or saying stop when something is stopping. Um, so those are the two things, access and modeling, that you can focus on. And now I'm going to show you how you can um, do modeling with a core word board while doing bubbles, which is a fun activity for a lot of students. Fun! Open. Off. Out. Ready, set, go. Mm-hmm.
more. Like. Do. More. More. Want. All done. On. Close. Fun. So one thing you'll notice is that I was doing more quite a bit. Um, and I just wanted you to know that you can keep modeling the same ones multiple times. Um, it's good to be repetitive. Um, it's good to use lots of different ones, but it's also okay to um, use the same ones multiple times and really um, model it quite a bit, um, use that repetition. So um, that is how you could use bubbles for somebody who's not really using their board very much, um, just using one icon at a time. Have fun!